Greetings everyone. This is Dr. Sarah Sue Myers from Journey Home Healing and I am in the middle of teaching a class series titled Whole Being Health um, in collaboration with 21 Acres and the next topic I'm going to be talking about in this series is about the food web. Um, there's a lot to that. And I got a little bit inspired this morning as I was driving to work of just coming on here to share what I have for lunch. Um, here's my lunch bag. A nice, kind of, sort of insulated, reusable lunch bag. And one thing I wanted to just bring up um, is just some things that I think about and contemplate when I am packing and preparing a lunch. First of all, what's most easily available and in the refrigerator? Um, what am I going to pack it in? Uh, and maybe even moving back from that, you know, at the grocery store is where did this food come from and how was it grown? Those are big, important questions that I think about and ask and look for labeling that might help inform me about that. So let's see what we got. First, it's my little nifty glass jar with all my supplements and herbs and medicines in them. Make sure I take those regularly. The next thing I have in here is some beet sauerkraut. This sauerkraut jar um, is produced uh, from Ashland, Oregon, so only a state away. And honestly, um, most of the sauerkraut in here was uh, sauerkraut that I made and just reused this jar. What else do we have in here? We have a bag that I've also reused a lot of times of some greens from the co-op, from the bulk section. I like shopping in the bulk section because it reduces the use of packaging, plastics, glues, resource, like all that, those things that really aren't necessary if you take that extra step to get that at the store. What else? Leftovers, glorious leftovers. This was a really, is a really great lentil, soup, lentil vegetable soup that my partner Blake made last night. Um, so I am quite excited about that. <clears throat> Wrapped ever so gently and caringly in this towel is a pear. Strangely enough, this, so this also came from the co-op, doesn't have a sticker, which I think is interesting because most of the produce that I find that the store has stickers on it and it usually says where it's from. I don't actually know where this one is from. Um, but there you go, there's my pear. And then I did something, I'm doing something really unique today, um, inspired my, by my last class that I did for Whole Being Health on diving and exploring concepts of self-care. And for me, my self-care journey is just really taking the time and slowing down and resting. Um, and I wanted to take the time for lunch today a little bit more than usual. Uh, I have a bad habit, notorious habit of eating while I'm researching or reading, um, doing work stuff in front of the computer. Um, and I'm trying to figure out creative ways to get me away from that habit and sit down and eat uh, my food. And the cool thing about this place, I am at my office on Lummi Island and as you can see there is a stove top with the tea kettle which there is hot water in here and I have this great mug this is one of my favorite things about being here for my own self-care is that I get to heat water up in a tea kettle and then pour myself make myself cups of tea all day Here we go. Um, with that, I have a lot of different loose leaf herbal teas. 
that a really good friend, colleague of mine, um, Kellyanne Nickerson, and her company Bloom Apothecary from Anacortes, Washington, makes. I chose the wonderful woman female support today. It has raspberry leaves, Tulsi, milky oat pods, nettles, rose petals, and calendula. It just felt like a really nourishing, supportive tea to have this morning. It's got some of my favorite plants in it. The roses, the nettles, the Tulsi. Can't go wrong. Um, so I have my tea going, and I will probably do a double pour of this um, after this round is gone. But also, back to that stovetop. I have not taken advantage of this with my lunches here. Um, even though I have access to this, I end up eating cold food a lot. But today, I brought a sandwich. I'm gonna make a grilled cheese today. I even have my stick of organic butter. And there is just two pieces of organic whole grain bread and some truffle cheese, also organic. Um, Organic's certainly a thing I think about with buying food. Um, I know that there's important details and, and how I've been informed with it influences whether that is my top priority or not. Um, sometimes I find organic food that's from a different country. And then sometimes I'm finding food that's made a lot more local, but it's not necessarily organic, but it's more small scale and sustainable um, because getting organically certified takes a lot of money and can be quite tricky for small scale farms. Um, but I really prioritize doing a handful of things organic, including the Dirty Dozen, which I will talk about in the class coming up, as well as any wheat products because of glyphosate use, which I will also be talking about in my upcoming class and why I have such a strong boundary with not purchasing or consuming conventional wheat, as well as a couple other food sources that are grown agriculturally in our country that are pre-treated with glyphosate or the Roundup Ready before it hits the supermarket aisles or the co-op aisles even. Co-ops are pretty good at like weeding that stuff out, but not always. So this is my lunch. I'm quite excited about it. And I'm really excited to be talking more about the food and the food web and how it connects to whole being health. So the health of us individually and collectively, but also at, for the health of the environment as well. All right, thanks for joining me. I will hopefully see you soon.